Architectural Builder Supply is pleased to present you with this recording of the technical question that is listed in the title of this video. This call may be monitored and recorded for quality assurance. Um, and I'm working on a, um, a little mini house um, whose uh, the the facade, the exterior envelope of the of the mini house is a rain screen. Um, so we have. Um, you know, our steel studs, which are six inches, and then we have a continuous insulation outboard of that, three inches, and then, then an inch gap, and then an inch of uh, the final material on the outside that's um, a plastic composite, uh, a Luca Bond type material. But the issue I'm having is that we have a mechanical closet built into the exterior uh, facade of the building that needs to be accessed from the exterior facade. But since it's a rain screen and uh, my structure is, is uh, a couple of inches away from the, you know, where, where my the um, the building envelope, you know, the face of the building. Um, I'm having a hard time finding a door hinge that will allow me to open a door that is uh, essentially two inches behind my range, uh, my uh, um, face material of my envelope. And 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 when I open that door, it won't hit the side panels. So I need something that's basically a raised barrel hinge, at least in concept. That, that when I when I read about these hinges, that's what it sounds like I need. But the swing clear hinge in my mind works a little bit better. Um, but I was wondering if you can help me determine which is the right hinge for me. And also, I can't figure out if I do use the ra raised barrel hinge, how much of a clearance I'm going to get. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, sure. Uh, stand by one moment. Okay. Um, so on the raised barrel, clearance in terms of where are you looking for clearance? Um, so I'm looking for clearance, um, when the door opens, uh, it's hard to explain. I have an image here in front of me. Do you mind if I send it to you? Please do. Uh, okay. Is it Richard? How do I? What's your email? It's sales. S A L E S. Okay. At. Yeah. A as in architectural. B as mm -hmm. in builders. Mhm. Mm supply. S U P P L Y. Dot net. And if you'll send that now, I'd like to look at it with you while we're on the phone together. Yep, sending it right now. Okay. So th I'm just going to label it. Yeah, go ahead. What were you going to say? Yeah, I was just going to uh, just going to complete the other uh, telephone call that I'm on while I'm waiting for your email to hit. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, you can Stand come by. back to me. Yep. Stay by. Hey, I see what you're doing there. Um, what you know. Where, where you have your vertical axis of pivoting is what we would call center hung. Mm. Um, and it's because of where you need the vertical axis of pivoting so that you can get to 90 degree and not hit that outside structure, whatever that, whatever that yeah, is. Your, exactly. You know, aluminum yeah. framing structure. Yeah. So, um, you, you see why I, tr I started off with the swing clear hinge, and I reversed the orientation of where the knuckle would be. I think normally a swing clear hinge might have it reversed, but I have the knuckle of this hinge in the diagram, um, let's say an inch, uh, basically the depth of the yeah. door over you, on the, yeah. Yeah, you've turned it on its end. Um, you've turned yeah. it on its end. Uh, you've turned it literally over to get that vertical axis of pivoting to where you need it to be. Um, yeah. You know, I I I I sure can't say it it wouldn't work that way. Um the only you know, the only concern is the margin from the face of the door to the face of the stop. You'd probably have to chamfer that, the door edge, so that it would clear the face of your of your stop on the frame. Um mm -hmm. Yeah. But logically um, when I've spoken to other uh, people, you know, that, who are, are familiar with hardware, they they kept referring to uh, the, the diagram I just sent to you in in that they they said that if when the door opens, you know, if you if you uh, consider the way I drew it, when that door opens, it would literally push the door out 
into the frame on the latch side, which I didn't understand because I kept telling them, but the vertical hinge is static and it should rotate right at that point, meaning the door wouldn't physically uh, move. It would it would just rotate. It wouldn't, you know what I mean, like shift left or right. Um, so it's nice to hear that logically that makes sense. And I, I agree that, you know, maybe some kind of testing would be useful, but you're you're asking me or you're telling me that I should also have a chamfered door? Well, and, which... So yeah. back to what you were told that, by other distributors. Yes, they're they're not incorrect, but mm -hmm. you can you or you can tap a resource to throw this into AutoCAD to determine mm -hmm. your gap. I would say that the standard eighth of an inch gap is going to be probably fine. And if you bevel it, you know, put an mm -hmm. eighth of an inch gap and then bevel it, you're going to be fine. Now, mm -hmm. if you had a door that was 12 inch thick, now you can mm -hmm. see, yeah, of course, that's going to be a problem. My door is 12 inch mm -hmm. thick. You know, mm -hmm. well, how thick is this door? Uh, inch and a half, maybe. I think I drew it as one point seven five inches, and okay, the honeycomb, right. the honeycomb yeah. portion that you see there, okay, that that's the physical door in its closed position, and there's a, like a rectangle drawn in there. That that's a louver. the yeah. The idea here is we're trying to bring fresh air into that closet because there's a condenser in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so regarding the chamfered edge, when your door is in the closed position. And mm -hmm. looking at your cross section, your corner, your absolute upper right, upper left hand corner, when mm -hmm. you start to rotate the door into its opening cycle, that mm -hmm. hard outside corner, you might need to chamfer that, do a, mm -hmm. a very small round over on that edge, or mm -hmm. the distance from the face of the door to the face of your stop, let's say it's mm -hmm. supposed to be about three thirty second of an inch. Yeah, you, you're gonna you're gonna need to AutoCAD that. You know where is the increase it a little bit. Yeah, or or chamfer the edge of the door. Yeah, um, what you would well, I drew this. I drew this in AutoCAD, and I had I I was trying to do exactly that, and I validated that I don't need the the stop. Your normal door frame stop, right? It would be right right behind your door. Or like you're saying, a, a very fraction of a distance about, behind about it. About ninety thousandths, yes, sir. Yeah. So when I when I drew it, I, I put it right there, and when I rotated it, there was no uh, conflict okay. between that. Yeah. So. Yeah. But I think you're gold. I mean, we use AutoCAD all the time for this exact purpose. Is it gonna swing when we get the thing hung? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Let me ask you another question. Uh, we're also looking for the door itself, which is just a hollow metal uh, commercial type door. Um, and as you can see, I've, I've incorporated a louver in there. So we're looking for a, a exterior door, a hollow metal louvered. But we also need – so um, the client wants to automate every single door in, in the building. And uh, in order to automate it, the, the way they want to do it, there's a, a European uh, manufacturer that, that – that, um, as long as you have an electric lock, right, uh, they, they can they could um, automate that. Uh, so – can I give? First of all, do you support supply hollow metal doors? And if so, can I? Would you guys be able to install a custom hardware in it for me? Um, so the answer is yes to the former and latter. The problem with us physically attaching the hardware to the door um, is something that I can do. It's just going to increase the cost because I need to get the door that I would otherwise drop ship to you to my mm -hmm. location. All the mm -hmm. hardware has to come to me where I can attach the hinges, put the mm -hmm. lock in, run the low, run the run the wires through the edge of the door, out mm -hmm. the hinge side, um, and whatever else you want on the door. And and, and yes, yeah, so I can do all of that. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. it, it just might be though that it's not worth the several hundreds of dollars extra to for mm -hmm. me to just to turn some screws. I hear you. I think we would be able to do it, but normally the hollow metal doors, the the um, the space they leave available for hardware at the latch um, usually is um, the most sort of generic and small hardware. And a lot of these electric latches are, are, are you know, the hardware types are um, the geometry of it um, might not be able to fit in to what's normally available. And I'm worried about my team being able to um, uh, work with the door, you know what I mean, where they might have to do some cutting and hacking, you know. So is there a way to specify the type of uh, – you know, space they leave in a hollow metal door for, you know, maybe a specific well, what, type of hardware? 
what you would do is you're going to – when we have the door manufactured, before we get to that point, we're going to see the hardware set and the template, and mm -hmm. I'm going to be able to tell you if it could be manufactured to accommodate the lock. Okay, fine. So then how about this? How about um, I send you that hardware and you tell me whether there is a, a hollow metal door that you could accommodate to accept that That'd hardware? It would be my pleasure. Yeah, okay. And uh, so um, – now let's. So it seems like my diagram could work. Obviously, no one is. Neither one of us have done it this way. So I have a little work to do on my end. Now, based on what you're seeing here, do you think the raised barrel hinge is something that I should consider, or do you think it's not going to work for me? No, because you're you're not going to get the movement of the vertical axis of pivoting over far enough to accommodate the the. Um, to, to accommodate the yeah. uh, distance from the rabbit to whatever, you know, it's got to be every bit of one inch. Uh, a raised yeah. barrel is only going to shift that vertical axis of pivoting over a small amount, maybe three yeah. inches. I, I'd have to look at the drawing. But it's, that, it's that's, a, that's the other thing. It's hard to determine based on the specs that's mostly available online is to determine exactly what that is, and you have to draw it, I think, we, you know, you were getting it earlier. Yeah. Um, but um, but I I think I'm on to something that's more appropriate for me. Um, so let me let me send you the information for the heart uh, the lock and I, let me send you the dimensions of my door and all that kind of stuff and maybe you can um, you know l we'll talk about what you can do for us maybe. I look forward to and, the answer. Thank you very much. Yeah yeah and you have also just one last question. You have um, swing clear hinges like the one I drew in my. Uh, do you carry that? Product? Yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. Okay. Swing clear are, are done in, you have to determine the height. Let's just say it's four and a half inch for a hollow metal door. And then mm -hmm. swing clear hinges are manufactured for either, either beveled edge doors or mm -hmm. square edge doors. And we simply have to know what we're mm -hmm. doing. Are we having square edges or beveled edges? I would say we're going to have beveled edges. So we just talked about it, right. Yep. Yeah. 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 So the relief on the swing clear hinge, that degree matches what you're doing. Okay, great. So should I email the same uh, same email you gave me, the sales? Yeah? Yes, sir. Okay, beautiful. Thank you, Richard. I'm glad you called. Bye, bye, bye. Sir. All right, all right, you too. Bye. Architectural Builders Supply hopes you have enjoyed this program.